Hi there. So now what we're going to do is talk about section 6.2. Okay. This again involves playing with our graph. It's real fun. Okay. This section is called vertical stretches and compressions. I will make a note that we're not covering section 6.3, which involves horizontal stretches and compressions. Um, if you go on and study trig, you'll talk about horizontal stretches and compressions in that class. Okay. But for this class, we will just deal with our vertical stretches and compressions. All righty. So here's what I'm going to do. We are going to draw three graphs. We're going to graph y equals x squared. And then we're going to graph y equals 2x squared. And last but not least, we're going to graph y equals 1 half x squared. Because our general question is, Okay, we've put negatives in, we've added and subtracted within and without. So now we're asking what happens if we multiply. Notice in each of these situations, we're looking at k times f of x. Okay, so let's graph these guys and let's make some comparisons. So if I graph y equals x squared, I am going to plot some points. And then we're at 2, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> I can't even connect my own dots. All right, so here's our graph y equals x squared. Okay? Now, offhand, we might not know what it means or what our graph is going to do with this 2x squared. So you can always go back to your t table. Well, let's plug in some points. If I plug in 0, I claim 0 still comes out. If I plug in positive or negative 1, notice I'm squaring, so I already know that I can consider these at the same time. Well, you square them and you get 1, and then you multiply it by 2 to get 2. In a similar manner, if I plug in either positive or negative 2, well, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So let's look at what happened. I'm still at 0, 0, but now when I plug in 1 or negative 1, I'm at 2. And now when I plug in 2 or negative 2, I'm way up here at 8. So notice. Our graph was stretched up. Why is that? Well, look, aren't we essentially taking each of our original function values and doubling them? Yeah. So in the back of our heads now, we can think, well, if we're going to take one half of it, what are we doing to each of our function values? We're dividing them by two, so they're going to be smaller. Okay, again, if you plug in 0, 0 is going to come out. If you plug in either positive or negative 1, you square them to get 1, but then you multiply it by 1 half to get 1 half. If I square 2, I get 4, but now I'm taking half of it, so I'm down at 2. So if we were just to plot these guys, Notice my graph is compressed. Okay, so let me write down our in general here. In general, If you have a function f of x and k is some constant, if we want to look at k times f of x, well, if k is greater than 1, it's vertically stretched. 
they say by a factor of k. And if k is between 0 and 1, like our 1 half example, then our graph will be vertically compressed by a factor of k. Notice, we're only looking at positive values. Why? Because if k is negative, remember that reflects your graph about the x-axis. That's what we discussed in the previous section. So, let's practice. I've got, ooh, about five examples for us to do, okay? So, let's put everything together, most everything together. Let's say if f of x is equal to x squared, let's graph negative 2 times f of x plus 3 minus 1. Whoa! I know this looks like a lot, but let's write our list of what we have to do in terms of translating, reflecting, etc. And then let's take our basic graph and do it, okay? First thing you do, you always work inside out. So this tells us we're going to take our basic graph and go left 3. Now what we do is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. But we got that negative, so we need to then reflect it about our x-axis. And last but not least, we'll then move our graph down 1. Wow! Alrighty. So, also, if you want to write out the formula, you certainly can, right? f of x plus 3 means we have x plus 3 squared, a negative 2, and then a minus 1. Okay? So, if we're going to just make a rough sketch of this, let's say this is our graph of y equals x squared. So, our first step is to move it to the left 3. So go 1, 2, 3. Okay. The next thing we do is we vertically stretch it by a factor of 2. That's going to make him taller and thinner. Whoa. And now we take that and we reflect it about our x-axis. And last but not least, we take this last graph and we shift it down one. Oops. Isn't that sweet? I think that's so fun. I mean, look how complicated this looks. But if you know each of your shifts and translations and reflections, as long as you do it step by step in the appropriate order, it's okay. Alrighty, so next, let's do this example. Okay, suppose I have a function and I'm going to call it s of t. And let us suppose that this function s of t gives the distance and we can say it gives the distance in miles in terms of time, which will be hours, okay? In other words, after t hours, we've gone this distance, okay? So, if the average rate of change of s of t between t and 4, suppose we have the average rate of change is, say, 70 miles per hour. 
What we want to know is, okay, what's the average rate of change of one half of S of T? Well, don't let this make you feel uncomfortable, okay? We're on the same interval from zero to four. Think of it this way. What are we doing to our function? Aren't we having everything? So all we'll do is have our average rate of change. All right. Let's do a couple more word problems. So, our next word problem is this. Suppose n equals f of a, what that does is it gives us the number of gallons of paint that's needed to cover a house and it's a function of the surface area. So n is the number of gallons to paint, number of gallons of paint, excuse me, needed to paint a house um, that has a surface area equal to a. So with surface area, we'll just call it a. And that's in square feet. So, what we want to do is as follows. What we want to do is say, well, what does 2 times f of a mean in the context of this problem? Okay? Well, what are we doing? We still have f of a, but we're multiplying it by 2. In other words, aren't we buying twice as much paint? So the way we can look at this is it's enough paint to cover the house twice. Right? If n is enough to cover it once, well then 2n is enough to cover it twice. Okay, let's contrast that with f of a plus 2. Okay, what does f of a plus 2 mean? Well, it's the number of gallons needed to paint the house, that's what a is, plus 2 more square feet. All right, and last but not least, what does f of a plus 2 mean? Well, again, it's the number of gallons needed plus 2 extra gallons. And you can look at that as a just in case. Alrighty, one more word problem example. We've done a lot of graphing examples and I really want you to get the word problem examples down as well. So that's why I'm spending some extra time on these. Now what I want to do is say suppose P of T is the U.S. population today and t is given in years. Okay? So, what if I wanted to write a formula for the population 10 years before today? Well, Notice we're not changing the population. What's being changed is the year. Well, you take the year and subtract 10, right? 10 years before today. 
what if we wanted to write the function of today's population plus, let me say that this is going to be given in millions, plus 10 million immigrants. How would we write this? Well, what we would do is we would take today's population, which is P of T. Now notice we're not changing the time, we're changing the population. We're adding on 10 million more. All right, what if I wanted to say 10% of today's population? Okay, well, 10% in decimal form is 0 0.1 of, we know means multiply, and today's population is P of T. <coughs> Notice this would vertically compress our graph by a lot. And one more, and then this will be it for this section. What if now we want to write a formula for the population after 100,000 people have emigrated? Okay, now this one is a little funky just because notice this is in millions, here we have 100,000. Notice we're not changing the time, what we're changing is the population. So we got our population. Now, 100,000 people have left, okay? So what we do is we subtract off. Well, this is 10% of a million, and so we subtract off 0.1. Notice because this is given in millions. If it was just given straight up, then we would just subtract off 100,000. All right, so that concludes section 6.2. Thanks.